we go. And uh, this time, we're going to go back to the A167, and we're going to actually go back into the plus in, uh, but this time we're going to be using some of the offset. So let me pipe it into the plus in. There we go. And I'm going to bring this up to uh, 100%. So then we should have two waveforms. There we go. And they're overlapping. Remember, green, red, so then it turns to yellow. Uh, but now let's apply a little bit of offset over here at the A167. I'm going to apply maybe about 2 volts of offset. And then now let's take a look at our oscilloscope as I'm applying offset. And we should see a little bit of a change. Yeah. So let me go ahead and apply the full version of that. And you can see it's kind of changing the shape of it. See that? Okay. Now, let me go back to my comparator, and I'll actually bring the level about halfway down because you'll be able to visually see this a little bit better as I'm, I'm applying offset. So now I have this about halfway, so my attenuators fit, bringing in 50% of the voltage at the plus in. And now I'm going to apply my offset. So I'm going to bring it up. There we go. Not getting the readout. Oh, I see why I'm not. Okay, I need to change my readout format. I was looking at AC and I need to be looking at DC. Okay, so let's keep it at five. Okay, so now we're back at offset zero. And let's look at our waveform over here. Okay, so there we go. We got two waveforms, one half the volume, the other one full volume. I'm going to bring my uh, offset up. Here we go. And if you look at the oscilloscope, you can see that one waveform is going up and the other one is sort of staying stationary. If I bring my offset in the opposite direction over here at the A167 down and then take a look at the oscilloscope, you can see that it's bringing it down. So this is what an offset is going to allow you to do. It's going to allow you to adjust or offset uh, whatever the voltage going in uh, is positioned at. So you can kind of adjust the position voltage-wise going to another module or within your uh, modular system. You can do this to sort of uh, make levels uniform within your system, or there's lots of other applications. Uh, let me go back to my, one, my 167. I'm going to bring the volume all the way up. If we look at our oscilloscope, uh, I'm going to bring it back to the middle until it's sort of overlapping with the first waveform. There we go. We got sort of a yellow waveform. And then now I'm going to bring it up, and you can see now what, what it's doing. See. So that's what an offset can actually do for you. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. I'm going to unpatch this, bring my volume all the way down on my A167, and then I'm going to patch it into the minus in. And then let's just do the same thing. I'm going to bring the volume up a little bit. Let's take a look at our oscilloscope. We have the inverted version of this. And then I'm going to bring the offset up. You can see that my second waveform is going up. And it is uh, going to be slightly different. So if I output the green one to a oscillator, it's going to have a different effect than if I output my red one to an oscillator. So just allows you to provide uh, different types of changes or varied changes or use one LFO in two different ways if you wanted to. Or you could apply it to two different filters. I mean, the list of possible uh, applications goes on and on for quite a while. Um, I think we pretty much got this concept. I am going to bring it down into the negative direction. And if we look at our oscilloscope, we can see that happening. There we go just so we can see exactly what an offset is doing. So there it's going in the positive offset, and then down again in the negative offset. Okay? So there we are. That's offset. Uh, I really, really wanted to do this uh, demonstration just because I found it very in enlightening for me. Um, just viewing, being able to view it just makes all the difference in the world. So now that we've gotten through that part of it, why don't we go into a little demonstration of the uh, comparator out. 
Uh, as you can see, or I don't know if you noticed before, but the light is uh, flashing right now, so it is actually firing the gate. Uh, it may be a little bit too difficult to see now that I'm looking at my camera, but uh, it's it's uh, going rather rapidly here, and that's probably why you can't see it. If I bring my gap up a little, I might actually fire a little bit less, or maybe fire a little bit more frequently. Oh, nothing yet. Well, let me get another waveform going in there. I'm going to go over to my A145, and I'm going to take a triangle wave out. There we are. I'm going to pipe it into the plus in. And all we're going to do this time is just see that it's actually going to output a gate. So I'm in my low frequency setting over here with my triangle wave, two low frequency signals at two different frequencies, uh, one relatively fast, one relatively slow, uh, both going into here. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And my comparator seems as though it's flashing very fast. I'm going to adjust this a little bit and do my offset. There you can see it's very solid. There we go. So now my comparator is not firing. If I leave it on, it fires every so often. Now, if I bring my gap all the way down to here, that's going to be the normal rate of firing. That's without uh, adjusting the threshold manually. That's going to be the default setting. But then if you want to um, adjust the frequency of how often that fires, then you can adjust the gap. So it should fire more frequently here, hopefully. Sometimes you have to adjust the gap as well as the offset until you get something that you like coming out. And here we're not demonstrating anything sonically, so bring it back. There we go. You can get something that fires a little more frequently. So there we have something a little more fixed, kind of a middle frequency. Before it seemed to be taking a really long time. And all I wanted to do in this case was just to show you that, yes, in fact, it is firing a gate whenever you input two voltages. So we got that demonstrated. Um, now let's see what that gate can do for us. So if we pipe out from here, take the comparator out, and then patch it over into our envelope here, gate input, we can see that it's firing off the envelope. at the same rate. Okay? And then you can adjust, you know, your offset settings until you get something you like there. Now you can use this for clocks or you can use this for envelopes or to reset uh, maybe a sequencer or reset an LFO, such as this one over here. You could use it to reset that if you wanted to. Um, or uh, one other example. Uh, is you can use it in a patch combination with this guy right here to create what they call the free-running ADSR. Um, and now that we brought that up, um, we're going to actually wrap up this section of the Dofer A167 uh, comparator demo because that is going to be what we're going to be preparing for in the next demonstration. We're going to be doing a little bit of a demonstration of the free-running ADSR um, and then maybe a few other little uh, odds and ends in the next demonstration. So please, please uh, stay tuned for that. I hope that you found this relatively useful. Uh, I know some of these features might be uh, a little bit basic for some, uh, but I think there's uh, some important information here that, uh, that we're covering here. So uh, please keep on patching out there, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.